Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to our course Marketing Management 1. We are in continuation of our previous session on introduction to marketing. I have with me my senior colleague Professor Jayanta Chatterjee from, Hello. from Department of Industrial and Management Engineering IIT Kanpur. So we are going to continue what we have discussed till now. I will just give you, give you a quick recap of what we have discussed till now. We talked about what marketing is wherein we talked about two different perspectives on marketing that is marketing as a social process and marketing as an organizational function. So, in the social process we talked about marketing as an exchange of value and in organizational function and a set of activities we talked about creating communication and delivering of value to the customer for managing customer relationship and the benefit of organization and its stakeholders. Then we have tried to illustrate uh, these concepts which we have discussed till now through some of the case studies in Indian context from the both product and service side. And we have also discussed about the differences in the marketing of product and the services, the differences in the marketing of physical goods and the services. So, in continuation of that we are going to talk about evolution of marketing concept. So, when we talk about the evolution of modern marketing practices, probably we need to go probably at the earlier of 20th century where this production focus was there, which was probably the first concept, certain people like to call it as production concept, where the emphasis was on producing at the cheapest cost, making it available or affordable to the customer and making it widely available. So, the assumption was if a product is widely available and it is affordable or probably at the cheapest possible cost, then probably customers will prefer it. The focus was on economies of scale producing a standardized kind of products. So, you have a product which is very similar, a probably a standardized offering which is available to all the customers. So, there was no variety in those products which offerings which were available at that point of time and this was probably one of the shortcomings of this concept that uh, customer is variety seeking or probably whatever they want they will get only a single type of offering or a standardized type of offering. There was no customization or probably no variants were available and this was a major shortcoming of this problem, uh, this concept which was this concept was followed by the product concept. Product concept was basically something which was push of engineering and R and D department in the organization, where if you make a product which is very superior in its performance, then probably the idea was that the customer will prefer that kind of product. However, the problem with this kind of product concept is that a product may, may be very superior in terms of its engineering or probably its design, but it may not be suitable to the needs of the consumer or it may not fit into the consumer environment, customer environment or it may not suits or probably be compatible with the, the kind of thing customer is looking for. So, we talked about yesterday the example of Tata Nano, where we have seen even the even the competitors of Tata will probably praise about this Tata Nano in terms of its engineering and its design and its manufacturing and then coming out with a product which, which was so affordable to the masses, it should have ideally changed the landscape of transportation in the India. However, the customers have not probably perceived it the way it was probably thought by the company. So, that is where product concept has its shortcomings in the sense that product might be a very good in terms of its engineering or the design, but it may not be suitable to the customer requirements. 
the product concept was followed by this selling philosophy where the product was pushed from the company through different types of sales promotion and different type of basically discounts heavy discount and the idea was if you if you push the product to the customer the customer will take them but sometimes it may happen that whatever push we provide from the farm side the customer may not, may not like to have that because they may not having the capacity or probably they may not be having the need for certain kind of products which might be pushed by the company side this was the selling concept was followed by this marketing which was the evolution of that first you understand the, in the selling concept the the push was from the company side in the in the marketing concept the focus has are probably the locus has changed from the firm to to basically customer side where the idea was the customer was the central point important thing was that it is Im very important to understand the customer needs and then design the offering and then offer it to the customer in the most suitable manner however in this marketing concept if we look into the definition we will find out that it is it is being seen as a something which is an organizational function or it is a basically a sole activity of one department of marketing or sales which was probably evolved in the further evolved in the this market orientation concept where it was believed for where it was said that marketing is an organization wide generation marketing is basically organization wide activity so it is not the responsibility of only marketing and sales marketing has to probably imbibe by the entire organization and i will just briefly elaborate more on this concept of market orientation that market orientation is defined as an organization wide generation of market intelligence pertaining to the current and the future needs of the customers dissemination of this intelligence across the department so cutting across the functional boundaries inside the organization and then coming out with a coherent one single response from the organization side so that is responsiveness so these three dimensions uh, before you move to uh, these three dimensions I just thought I will interject about uh, your first slide yeah. uh, if you can just go to your first slide where you showed the evolution of marketing you know I can so easily see this it has happened in front of me during uh, my childhood for example if I take a product like toothpaste uh, it only came in white color and it was available in three sizes small medium size and the large size and that is it and today if I look at uh, because of the evolution of marketing concept today toothpastes are maybe you know they are uh, in all kinds of color there is yeah. blue there is red there is white yeah. then there are mixed colors and then there are uh, uh, addition of paper mint and other products uh, so, so product differentiation has been extended so and and the most important thing is what has happened is that now uh, if anybody wants to get into toothpaste market they can't actually start here they have to start somewhere here yeah. because they have to now understand that where is the gap what is a particular type of customer segment missing yeah. and you have to come up uh, with that value proposition so today uh, some toothpaste will not talk about cleaning the teeth they will talk about freshness of breath they will talk about your kissability if I can use that word so uh, the value proposition is now driving and very uh, narrow value proposition or very niche value proposition for a very particular type of uh, customer segment and and then coming up with a product which exactly meets that need then you can have actually a mix of needs also then you have another kind of offspring so today you can have a toothpaste which has salt in it, which has soda in it, uh, which has peppermint in it and it is uh, positioned for a particular type of market segment. Yeah. So even when you are targeting a toothpaste for the youth market in that itself there will be five variants. So therefore making just only one toothpaste which is white and in just three sizes 
today is absolutely not uh, no no. Uh, today we have to look at this uh, different strokes for different folks yeah. and as a marketing person we have to start therefore with the specific segments requirement in mind and then go backwards that what product will satisfy and then uh, talk to the production people interact with them and come up with the final product. So, you are talking about market yeah, orientation. So I just add on what you have said. In fact, uh, if we talk about, in fact, in the, this toothpaste market, if you see currently the, 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 the segment which is growing the fastest because all those traditional or mass segments are probably stagnant or they are not doing that well. The segment which probably the maximum growth is this sensitivity ah, segment, yes. which is growing at a very fast pace in an in Indian market. And you will see that competition is heating up in that segment. And that is where you have, this is where this utility of this market orientation concept comes into the picture that market intelligence or intelligence generation has to be dynamic in nature. It has to be done organization wide or across the department and that information has to be collected. Basically, it has to be basically sorted and probably it has to be further processed so that you can disseminate that information across the organization. You go back to your production people, you go back to your R&D people, ask them, can we come out with a solution to probably this kind of evolving trends in the market? And then probably when you basically disseminate and then, then you come out with your one coherent probably a response, which is organizational response as a result of these two things. And and that is why some people very nicely have summarized this as sense, share and respond. Yeah. And as you uh, uh, mentioned earlier that marketing's responsibility still is to be the customer's representative to the organization. Yeah. But today uh, it is not that marketing uh, brings a requirement and hands over to R&D. Most of the new products are developed in by a cross-functional teams yes. where marketing, design, research, development, production, uh, materials, supply chain people all sit together and interactively. So, this is not a very sequential process. Yeah. This is a back and forth back and, forth. and uh, number of loops happen yeah. and to come before you come out with the final response. So, the consequence of this market orientation is that it should ideally leads into, lead you in, in the business performance. It will help you in probably coming out with a suitable response from the employee side. We were discussing yesterday the case of Disney and it will also probably generate the favorable response from the customer side. Followed by this, this marketing concept, uh, this market orientation concept, the, the probably the most modern concept we can talk about is this holistic marketing, which was the contribution of uh, Kotler and Keller and where they have talked about that marketing happens at the different fronts actually from the organization. So, there were four dimensions inside this holistic, holistic marketing part, where we talk about internal marketing that is marketing to your own employees, the marketing across the de departments marketing to your top management or senior management and then integrated marketing you come out with one single message from the organization now you have so many different platform to talk about so you but there cannot be different messages from one organization and reaching to this different platform so this 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 there has to be a one unified or single communication from the organization side the message should be coherent and then the third aspect of this holistic marketing was this relationship marketing, where you manage your relationship with your customers, your distribution partner, different types of distribution partners like retailers, wholesalers or whatever different form, form of your supply chain model and your distribution models are. So, you basically manage your relationship with your suppliers because they are this even the suppliers are very important source of. Uh, uh, ideas and probably the changes which are happening. So, even the, the integration of the supplier in your uh, value chain and uh, we will talk about later is very important thing. And then So, I think this what you are saying is that this relationship should be sort of considered with an inverted comma yeah. 
yeah. that means it is not only relationship with customers yeah. but it also means relationship with uh, suppliers relationship with uh, channel partners yeah. so i think uh, even uh, today i want to in the next session uh, talk a little bit about uh, aspects of electronic marketing which also necessitates a much higher focus on relationship marketing so in this course i think uh, our emphasis on relationship marketing or this shifting focus from acquisition of customers to retention of customers yeah. and loyalty of customers cu customers becoming part of your marketing team or what we call customer advocacy so this particular topic is a central theme of our course and we will come back to this again and again from different perspective yeah. and i think this newly emerging area socially responsible Sponsor marketing, marketing is this is also something that we will perhaps spend one or two sessions on this particular topic yeah because now this is becoming increasingly important that whatever you do in an organization it has to be socially responsible otherwise if you are not doing it probably in that way the society's response or in general attitude will not be very favorable so in the socially responsible marketing part we talk about the the way probably business is done so we talk about ethics then we talk about uh, um, how to basically, uh, basically economize on energy in, in, uh, yeah. even even actually optimize consumption earlier yeah. marketing's role was to if somebody has two lipsticks somehow convince her that uh, she needs to buy four more lipsticks yeah. but i think we are we have now understood that this uh, take and take more from nature and make and make more things and push and push more things into the market this cycle just cannot go because this cycle is creating such a huge amount of garbage or waste across societies that uh, the world cannot sustain it. Yeah. So all the green issues, yeah. I mean this whole area is also called green marketing in yeah. some other way. Fundamentally the point here is that marketing just cannot think in terms of its own uh, limited uh, purview of uh, profit uh, for the organization. It has to think in terms of people people relationship with employees relationship with suppliers relationship with uh, channel partners and of course uh, relationship with customers very important and uh, also they have to think in terms of the profit uh, not only profit but the planet yeah. and the people so i think that is why somebody people are saying that the uh, objective of earlier uh, people used to say what is objective of marketing and uh, the, the standard response will be top line and bottom line yeah. emphasis was on revenue and profit yeah. today we are talking about the so called triple bottom line yeah. that means not only profit but also people and planet yeah. so this was, this was a basically an overview of how the the current marketing practices have evolved now if you look into the timeline probably that 1915 and uh, 1950s and 60s with this strategic marketing components came into the picture like marketing mix market segmentation product life cycle concept brand image all these things came into the probably 50s and 60s you have basically targeting of uh, segments identified segment and then probably talking about uh, different types of marketing the variants of marketing like uh, services marketing societal marketing social marketing all these things came into the 70s and then th this was basically the evolving phase of this strategic marketing process then you have basically 80s and 90s probably talked about more of probably customization of uh, offerings and probably uh, the off i think the relationship marketing yeah. movement started gaining ground from the 90s yeah yeah relationship marketing started getting in probably the it foretold in the marketing practices in that time period and the focus was probably shifting from the firm side to the customer side and the customers were entitled to choose their offering so co companies were trying to come out with a individualized offering or customized solutions 2000 21st, 21st century advent of 21st century has seen because of the economic downturn and all that lot of pressure on on the side of uh, companies so the justifiability of this uh, 
marketing expenses so roi and probably financially driven marketing came into the picture and if we see the the probably the the current decade which is which is probably more influenced by what you have already talked about the big data okay mm. and targeted marketing to individual customers because this big data is enabling company to basically uh, come out with the offerings which are very suited to personalized needs of the customers so this is an overview of the timeline of how marketing has evolved over the period of time now we'll briefly also talk about what are the different types of offerings which are being provided by the sellers in the market so the one very common market offering is physical goods as we understand the all the output of this manufacturing sector can be probably part of this physical goods and then you have uh, all this consumer durables and all those product comes into it then you have services uh, today if you see the 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 proportion of the gdp of all the developed economies or even probably in indian economy we will find out that the services dominate the physical goods so probably in india it is like 60% or that ratio 60 to 40 is services versus physical goods if you go to the developed world nations probably you will see the 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 ratio is more probably tilted towards on the services side so services like um, the provided by the airlines all these individual service offerings are are part of this i call basically this uh, another type of offering as service bundles we are not an individual service rather basically a bundle of services are offered as a package because this is becoming very very common form of offering if we look at this destination marketing so country is promoting a particular place they are talking about probably uh, the whole thing which is probably offered by a place so all the attractions all the basically including food including staying food, yeah historical things so they are basically all part so of so culture food yeah. sightseeing yeah. Uh, uh, health and well being absolutely all that you put together for example the way we market kerala or the way they market rome yeah or uh, paris yeah so uh, we will also see like uh, this service bundle form even uh, if we say in the case of destination marketing we see that even this lot of uh, this e-commerce companies which operate in this space like uh, they, they basically provide uh, destination packages where they will arrange your basically starting from this visa services to basically trans uh, this um, transportation transportation then accommodation stay, accommodation the travel in the within that destination and basically they will arrange for sightseeing so it, it is coming as a whole package where you have a different type of services but they are bundled together so that is probably enhances the value of that offering actually in fact i have seen in some literature they call it service ecosystem service ecosystem yeah marketing so, of the uh, yeah. ecosystem yeah so we also have in the service bundles uh, different type of offerings like uh, there are companies organization is specializing in events management so who have the, uh, the probably competency or the skills they they basically uh, arrange a whole uh, event like uh, basically a, a music show and they will arrange all the things inside it why well, even weddings are now weddings are arranged yeah, uh, by yeah, this yeah, event absolutely. management companies event, event man and we also talked about in the service bundle this experiences which we are, you are talking about in amusement park there are different kind of things which are available but they come as a bundle actually mm. and many a times uh, these these are charged not as a individual services they are charged as a basically service bundles actually so whether you are using one single service or not but you will be charged for that then we have ideas being uh, marketed like uh, this idea of make in india is very popular at this point of time you manufacture in in india trying to make the government of india is trying to make india as a manufacturing hub so that is what uh, basically the currently the government of india is marketing to different uh, business community within the country outside the country they are trying to pursue the manufacturing firm inside the country because to tap that uh, that vast majority are probably a large pool of uh, uh, 
uh, this workforce which is available in India. China has already done probably to an extent this thing. So, so along with the idea marketing, we also have what we call cause marketing. Cause marketing. Like for example, say girl child education yes. or um, uh, mother and child health yes. or uh, rural health, all of these are uh, need of education at every level. Uh, uh, these are also now very powerful marketing areas. Yeah. Then we also market organizations. Sure. And organizations are marketed to its employees, to its uh, investors, to its different types of stakeholders, investing agencies because an organization are also marketed to basically society that uh, many organizations these days come out about their mission statement and they promote it very heavily in the society so that they have a favorable response from the society at large also. Then this uh, one more type of offering which is there is this personality offering like uh, famous personality being uh, marketed. Yeah, the, the cricketers yeah. or politicians. Yeah. These are basically marketed to the organizations for the endorsement of their product and the services. Sure. And or marketed to the voters for yes. yeah. uh, getting elected. Yeah. And the, the last thing in this type of different type of market offering is properties actually. Sure. So, that, that is very another a very important type of market offering in the sense like uh, uh, you sell basically the personal properties, you sell basically the office office space, office industry, commercial property, pro commercial properties, agricultural properties and this is becoming a huge market. You have basically company in this space uh, on the both side uh, like earlier there used to be only this uh, agents or probably physical form of uh, organizations. Now you have a co uh, organization in the e-commerce space also which are into this business. and Sure doing quite well and revolution, revolutionizing this sector. Thank you. Okay.